Hello everyone and welcome to a new video MC Mora here and in today's video I'm going to teach you all about Kage and how you can use him in the fifth season of Street Fighter 5 so let's get started So first of all, let's discuss what type of character is Kagi. Kagi certainly is a Shoto character, and Shotos are like Ryu, Ken, and Akuma characters who have a fireball, Tatsu, uppercut, you know, the whole kit, the traditional Street Fighter moveset. Kage is tailored toward offense, so when you're playing Kage, your goal is to be in front of your opponent's face, preferably if you have them in the corner, and just pressure them to this with plus frames, throws, mix-ups, and all of that. His pressure gain is very strong in my opinion, especially in the corner. When Kage have you cornered, his corner pressure is crazy good. Kage also have some really high damage output. If we look at like one bar combo from Jumbin, something simple like this is almost, like look at the damage, that is almost 380 damage. That's about 38% for one bar, it's crazy high. He have really good V skills. I won't, I won't say really good, but they are they do their functions well pretty much. So his V skills are decent. He have two pretty good V triggers in my opinion, especially V trigger one. I will say his jump arc is really strong. His his jump is kind of low and fast, so it, he is good at jumping at opponents. He also has a dive kick. This is really good for baiting anti airs, and he has air fireballs to bait anti airs. So. Pressure wise, if you want to get in your opponent's face and just mold him, Kage is excellent for that. But sadly, he does have other issues. The thing with Kage is that his neutral game is pretty weak. This is because while his movement speed is decent, like as you can see, his walk is actually pretty fast. The issue with Kage is that the range on his normals are really short. So he shares the real problem where he does have really short range on his normals. He does have faster walk speeds than Ryu, so this is kind of better, but the issue with Kage is that he doesn't have a traditional Shoto Firebolt. His regular Hadouken, as you can see, is just this short burst. It's kind of like dance Hadouken. It's not bad if your goal is to poke with it, so from this distance it's not bad. Or if you want to like do crouching medium kick Hadouken, this, it's fine for that, but it's not a zoning tool. And it's also not Blossom Block, as you can see, so it is not like... A, it's, it's like a poke tool at best, but it's not a zoning tool. So you can poke with this, but you can't zone with him. The zoning tool is a light punch fireball or the shakanatsu fireball. This is alright. This has a benefit that it doesn't extend his hurt box forward. So you, your opponent have to hit you to hit you out of the fireball. Characters like Ryu, you know, Ken, all the other Shotos can get hit out of their fireballs on startup without actually their opponent hitting them because they extend their hurt box forward this doesn't happen with Kage but the downside of course is that it is pretty slow so as a zoning tool it is alright but it's not fantastic his defense is pretty good because he have a 3 frame of course and he does have the uppercut of course so Kage does have decent defense so overall he's a very aggressive character he, is, he excels at point blank in his opponent face he excels with his high damage does have some decent air game, but his biggest issue is that his neutral is pretty weak. So now let's start talking about Kage's normal, and I'm gonna start with his lights, and of course I'm going to bundle the light punches together, the crouching and standing, because they do work together in tandem anyway. His crouching light punch is his 3 frame normal, of course, as we know, 3 frame is the fastest normal in Street Fighter 5, so it is good that he has a 3 frame. It's also his really, his tech throw, so for example, if we have here, uh, if we have here jury blocking, you can do crouching light punch and then throw after and you are in throw range. If you do the standing light, you're not in throw range. This is plus 3 on block, but this is only plus 1. Now, the issue with this is because this is plus one, if your opponent meshes a three frame at that point, you will not be able to throw them out of it. So, as you can see, if I do the crouching light bunch and try to throw them, it's not a distance issue, it is that I don't have the enough plus frames to throw them out of the jab. So, this means that you will have to convince your opponent to not want to press buttons, right? And this is where the standing light punch comes into the fray. 
because yeah I can throw you after this but I am still in range to frame trap you so you can do something like this and you know get a frame trap going and once you stop pressing buttons then you will be able to go for the throw so the crouching light punch into standing light punch this is a very common sequence because your opponent can mash out of the throw for the crouching light punch now you can also, after you have convinced them that they are not gonna press buttons, you can simply go for the standing light punch and then go for the throw. Even so, it's not a real tech, you will need to micro walk for this. The idea is you need to stop them to press buttons by going for frame traps like these. The jabs can combo into the light tatsus, so you can do something like this. Jab, jab, light tatsu. Or just go for the dash oki. Then you can combo them into the uppercut. So... Jab jab into like heavy uppercut, this is pretty decent. They they expect they, they behave like how you would expect a traditional jab to. One important thing to note is this is a buff that he got in season five, is that his crouching light bunch or his three frame now combos to the medium. So this will combo. So if you try to get an interruption, you can get something like this medium crouching jab into crouching medium, into medium tatsu, into maybe medium uppercut, or maybe something like this. Which means that Kagi finally gets a decent, uh, he gets a decent reward from matching three frame or this reward from interrupting with his three frame. So as we said, these two work together. The crouching light kick is the typical crouching light kick. It just its its purpose is to just shit low and combo onto crouching light punch, so that you'll be able to get this. It's it's nothing really too fancy. It is just a typical crouching light kick. It doesn't have exceptional range. It is it's alright, but. It's nothing too crazy, you know, it's just a typical, it's just a generic crouching light kick. Most of the like, crouching light kicks in this game are actually kind of generic. So it is what it is. Uh, his standing light kick is also not amazing, sadly. It doesn't leave him in throw range, so, or, or it does leave him in throw range, but it is like the crouching light punch. But this is even slower. So it's not a move that you will be using and throwing after. It is the exact same situation as the crouching light punch. But again, it does even have a little bit more pushback, so this might not work. The reason that the usage I found for the standing light kick is that it have more range than his other lights. So for example, if I'm standing right here, jab jab might whiff, but jab light kick will connect. So you will be able to convert from longer ranges. I believe, you know, this is the main purpose that I found for this. Basically, Basically longer longer range conversions on your jabs. It's four frames. It's only plus one Leaves you in throw range, but again a plus one is not a real tech, so It is what it is. Kagi in general in my opinion have pretty I want to say blue average lights. Now let's talk about Kagi mediums or his medium normals and the star of the show Easily one of Kagi's best normals is his crouching medium punch. This crouching medium punch is 5 frame startup. This number is significant because at 5 frame startup, this means that it counter hit combo from all of his lights. So if you do crouching lab into crouching medium, this combo, standing jab into crouching medium, this combo. So it makes it very, very good to convert into from your light attacks. If you're expecting a counter hit, as, as we showed in the previous sequence, if she is blocking and we go, we went to a block string like this, this of course is combo so it is very good in that regard right the other really strong thing about the crouchy medium is that because it is five frame startup it is also plus three on block five frame plus three on block this is fantastic this is fantastic in every way possible because there is also very little pushback on it at five frame startup and plus three this means that eight frame traps into itself so you can get something like this going if it happens to counter hit from distance you can combo sweep you can frame trap with it into the standing medium punch you can frame trap with it into the standing heavy punch so you can get a frame trap like this and this will frame trap them if they try to mash anything and of course the ex fireball is plus one block so this is a perfectly valid frame trap especially good at the corner i will say if you have them in the corner and we had jury not block anything we have her block everything and not challenge let's go to the corner if we take her to the corner and do a block string like this you can just immediately throw after so very very good stuff right the crouching medium bunch is amazing for pressure, it's amazing on block. 
you can even do stuff with the standing medium bunch as well if you're from a little bit of a distance you can apply the same scenario you go for the standing medium bunch and then get a combo from there if you are pretty close to them and you have happened to get this a uh, counter hit get a counter hit on the crouching medium you can combo that crouching heavy so you can get something like this if i can find this right and then get massive combos like that, like, like that was 320 from a meterless counter hit crouching medium much and of course it is also his bread and butter in most of his combos if you are playing kage the crouching media bunch is the start up the start of your combo it's what your friends gonna try to do and hit confirm on hit so if you manage to land this on hit and you're very close you can combo it in the standing heavy then you can do heavy tatsu heavy db if you're from a little bit further range somewhere like here the heavy bunch might whiff so you do crouching medium into standing medium into medium tatsu, into uppercut, all really really good. And as we said, if you're from a little bit of further range and manage to get the counter hit, even from max range like this, you can get the sweep. Fantastic normal, I will, I will suggest using it a ton, and because it's so plus on block and because the game on counter hit is that deadly, it will allow you to walk up and grab them, and as you can see, like there's very little pushback. So it's like just a tiny micro walk and throw them again, or you can do something like this, walk again, walk again, and then, you know, apply strong pressure with this. It's an excellent move that I would recommend using all the time. It is uh, the, like the cornerstone of your pressure game with Kage. Now, the second normal is his standing media punch. Standing media punch is minus one. So this is not a pressure normal. This is what you would do to hit confirm. This, you would hit confirm into it or use this to cancel into Hadoukens or fireballs in general. So standing medium into Hadouken, or if you manage to land the hit or even on block, you can do something like this. It's not a normal that you will use in bl block strings. You will most likely be using the crouching medium bunch 99% of the time, but this is decent for you know, for shimmies and for confirming into because, you know, the main confirm because you can combo into it from the crouching medium, pretty much. So it is, the, its main purpose is this, doing the crouching medium into it. That is the main use of standing medium bunch. It, its range is pretty fine. It allows you to counter or to combo relatively decently, reliably from the crouching medium. So it is just a, it's a normal that you can cancel into. It is your hit confirm, basically. The third normal we ha he have is the standing medium kick. Standing medium kick from Kage is a normal that I am conflicted about. It have its uses, especially in V-Trigger. In V-Trigger, this normal can be deadly. If we have here, okay, we have V-Trigger 1 and V-Skill 1. You can, you know, do this and cancel into the V-Skill. And that is a really good confirm. If you have super, you can even do something like this. And then super cancel this. The same goes if you have V-Skill 2, so if you have V-Skill 2, you can also do the standing medium kick, combo to the V-Skill 2, into the uppercut, it's all really really good. If you have V-Trigger 2, and you manage to land a standing medium kick, you can combo a raging demon out of this. So when you are in V-Trigger, the standing medium kick is fantastic, it is excellent. But at 9 frame startup, with the range it have, it, ha it does have decent range, but 70 frames of recovery is too much and 9 frame startup is too much. So it, it does have its uses, it's especially deadly in V-Triggers, but as a poke, it is the best he have, probably the best he have along with the forward heavy bunch. But across the board, in, in general, across this game, it is worse than many of the other standing medium kicks. But it is a highlight of Kage, especially if you're on V-Trigger. If you're on V-Trigger, you know, who does who the who wouldn't like that? Like this is of course really really strong. Especially in V triggers. The next abnormal is his crouching medium kick. And the crouching oh okay, and one thing I forgot to say about the standing medium kick before I go to the crouching one, is that if you manage to land this as a counter hit, you can actually combo a standing medium kick after it, or crouching medium punch after it. So this is a combo. But this is finicky and you will most likely not be using the standing medium kick from this range but if you happen to land this as a counter hit you can get this a crouching medium here so it is worth noting but from my experience this is an unlikely scenario to happen it's not gonna happen a lot back to the crouching medium kick and his crouching medium kick is pretty decent it is pretty good for confirms so when you're fishing in the neutral going for something like crouching medium kick into the, the fireball 
this is pretty common and something that you will be doing all the time or linking from the crouching medium kick to the tatsus again it's very very common his crouching medium kick is these it you know it it can be hit confirmed it is pretty difficult but you can hit confirm this but the issue is it is typically you can combo the crouching medium into the medium kick tatsu right so you can do this this is a norm but the thing is if you're trying to hit confirm this and you do the cancel a little bit late it might not combo so if i'm really late on this as you can see this wasn't a combo so we will most likely be doing crouching medium kick into the light kick tatsu but this from some ranges may not link so if you hit them if you hit their extended hurt box the medium the light tatsu might whiff so it's kind of finicky you can of course combo into the uppercut and this is what sako says that you should practice with kage i find it really difficult to do in all honesty to just hit confirm the crouching medium kick into the uppercut but you know lord sako says that this is the best and who am i to doubt lord sako of course sako is the best so his mediums in general is are pretty decent one thing that you'll have to be aware of is that this and I want to talk about this again is that the standing medium is your go-to hit confirm crouching medium is your combo starter crouching medium kick is is, is one of your best footsies tool and the standing medium kick is a decent footsies tool but is only really really you know fruitful or dangerous when Kage is in V-trigger so now let's talk about Kage's heavy attacks and we will start with his standing heavy punch standing heavy punch for Kage it's pretty special. This is 6 frame startup, so 6 frame startup is pretty fast. It combos from his crouching medium punch. So the main uses for this is in your bread and button combos. You can do crouching medium punch, standing heavy, and this is a combo. You can then cancel into a heavy punch hurricane kick or tatsu, into a heavy TB. So it's really really good. The second part of it that is really special is because it is 6 frame startup, it's also really useful in frame traps. So if you happen to do something like a crouchy medium punch, this is plus 3, which means that you can then frame trap into the standing heavy. So you can do something like this, and that is a frame trap as they try to mesh. It's, you can also use it for like cancelling into Hadouken and all of that. So it is decent as a frame trap, it is a good combo filler. At 6 frame startup you can also use it as a whiff punish, but its range is really short, so it does work as a free as you know, you can use it as a whiff punish, or whiff punish I mean, as you can see, but the range on this is really short, it's not gonna whiff punish from 3 quarters of the screen. It's hard to get this going honestly, and there is a little bit of recovery, but you can, you can absolutely use it this way, it is possible as you can see. So standing heavy match in general is a pretty good normal in my opinion. Now his second normal that I wanted to talk about is the crouching heavy. Crouching heavy is 9 frame startup so this is really good of course as an anti-air if your opponent is jumping in on you. It is a pretty decent anti-air to go for. Pretty reliable, pretty easy to use. Its hitbox is not the best so you are a little bit vulnerable when you're doing it. You can get beaten or trade. If you, if you want the most reliable anti-air, I would recommend the uppercuts more, but the crouching heavy punch is valuable, you can absolutely use it to anti-air your opponent. This is the first use. Now, the second use of this is that it combos into his heavy kick axe kick. This is only normal that combos into the axe kick. As you can see, if, even if you do like heavy punch into the heavy axe kick, of the heavy stomp it doesn't come crouching heavy punch is the only one that links to the heavy axe kick this is significant because after the heavy axe kick you are plus five so you can combo a crouching medium punch so this basically means that this is the key to kagi's max damage combo so if you manage to land jump in you will do it and then do the heavy axe kick then cancel into crouching medium into tatsu so it is your key attacks it is what you're going to start your max damage combos from and like we said earlier if you happen to land a crouching medium bunch you can counter hit combo it into the crouching heavy so in pressure situations you can absolutely get something like this done which is really really good so it is it is useful as an anti-air it is useful for your maximum damage combos his other normal is his standing heavy kick Standing heavy kick is, it is his typical, it is a decent poke, but of course it is only, a, it's also a high, so if your opponent is ducking, it goes over them. And a lot of ways it is similar to Ryu's or Shanli's. 
you can use it to hit people out of their fireball startup you can use it for crush counters of course if your opponent you know if your opponent does something that is punishable by the counter hit for example if they did a wake up db or something and you block it you can of course get a dash up combo like that you can dash up and then get a medium so it is a typical crush counter punish one cool thing about the standing heavy kick is because of its angle it is actually pretty decent as an anti-air for far range jumps so if your opponent is jumping in on you from a distance something like this and you happen to anti-air them with it as you can see you can get a crush counter from here from this distance and if you manage to get a crush counter you can combo into heavy tatsu into heavy uppercut you can even combo into ex tatsu into heavy kick tatsu into heavy uppercut so it can be fruitful if you land it as an anti-air and you can use it to basically you know use it for crush counter punishes that is the two main purpose for this attack pretty decent pretty okay move it's not fantastic but it is pretty good the other thing is his sweep and his sweep is nine frame startup and it does have actually pretty decent range the range is not terrible i would say it's about average or a little bit above average but it is pretty good at nine frames at eight frames startup i'm sorry eight frames for a sweep is all right the range is fine it is gonna be one of your typical go-to v trigger activation moves you can do with it actually v trigger and be in a lot of plus frames so it is good for that if you have v, v skill 2 and v trigger 1 you can actually otg from this let's have a remote block so if you happen to land this as a crush counter you can get some you know you can get some just three stands here in the combos you can of course get some mix up out of here with stuff like that there is some teleport mix ups that you can do in this situation so his sweep is really good it is really good because it also combos from his crouchy medium bunch on counter hit and in general it is one of his better v trigger activations it is pretty decent overall now his final heavy is his forward heavy bunch his forward heavy bunch is actually pretty good this normal is really really good it's a heavy attack that is nine frame sort of so this is actually really good it does have decent range this is one of your better poke and with punish tools and it's also very hit confirmable so it have a target combo attached to it so you do forward heavy into the heavy kick forward heavy into heavy kick if you have v skill 2 you can complete this combo by doing v skill and this will do this target combo this is pretty all right this i'll say is pretty all right because you can get some decent conversion out of this it does give you some decent damage out of pokes it's 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 a decent with punish tool it's one of his absolutely one of his better footsie tool and one of his better with punishes it's the moves that you will be using a lot in the neutral you can also use this for v trigger activation and then get some really good activations here it's a very good move in general it's moves that i will recommend using a lot obviously you will have to hit confirm it so if you if you see your, that your opponent is blocking you shouldn't commit to the second part you only do the second part on hit you know, on hit and it is pretty hit confirmable so overall one of your best footsies tool by far especially with his walk speed at nine frame startup hit confirmable crush counter you can actually dash hub here and get good okay if you have her quick rise this leads to good oki or plus five on quick rise so it's pretty good overall the final thing i didn't talk about before is his overhead that is a forward medium as forward medium of course this is a typical overhead it can if you, if you manage to hit it counter hit you can combo a jab out of it and you can you can actually time this to be meaty and then get a crouching jab after it so it is a pretty decent overhead i'll say pretty all right it is it, the range isn't fantastic it's just an overhead it is just an overhead that with some setups can be made to combo after and on counter hit you get a jab so it's not bad at all this is pretty decent overhead overall kagi have really good pressure normals i would say his normals are really fantastic for pressure for for neutrals they are little bit you know below average in my opinion and that in general is the problem with Kagi, the range on, them, on most of them are not fantastic, but for pressure and combos they are really really good. 
So now we are going to start talking about Kage's jumping normals and I'm going to start with his jumping heavy kick. Now just to start, Kage kinda have a short and fast jump bark. So as you can see his jumping is kinda low to the ground and his jumping heavy, heavy kick helps a ton in this regard because it have a good downwards angle. It kinda reminds me of Shan Li's jumping heavy kick or Sakura's jumping heavy kick. You know they have such a good downwards angle that they do have a tendency to hit from uh, you know a good height and because of Kage's short jump arc it actually kind of helps him a lot like a lot of people will not be ready to deal with your jumps so when you're jumping in at your opponent in my opinion jumping heavy kick is your best option it is really really strong the second jump attack i want to talk about that is notable is his jumping medium kick jumping medium kick is a wicked cross-up this is very 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 good in my opinion yeah it could be one of the best cross-ups in the game the hitbox on it is quite stupid you can easily link whatever you want after it so you can easily combo after it no problems whatsoever it's a very very good jumping cross-up attack it will leave you in good advantage on block excellent jumping attack so jumping heavy kick and jumping medium kicks are really really good the other really notable thing about Kage is his jumping dive kick. This is done by pressing down plus medium kick when you are jumping in. And you have to do this at the apex of the jump. If you do it too early, it will not come out. If you do it too late, you can kinda get it out. But, you know, you have to do it at the apex of the jump. If I do it really delayed, it's not gonna come out as you can see. You have to do it at the apex, right? Why is this good? His jumping dive kick is very good for blowing anti-airs. And what do I mean by that? Well, we talk, we said that Kage had a short and fast jumping arc, right? So his jumping heavy kick hits from really high and it's really quick because his jumping is kind of short. So your opponent will try to anti-air you early, especially early because of your jumping heavy kick. What the jumping dive kick will do is Kagi will delay his his landing timing so that your opponent anti-air attack will whiff and you will be able to punish them. So for example, if we here had Honda try to, like he will try to anti-air us with this heavy bunch. Typically speaking, if I'm jumping normally, Kagi's anti-air is so good. It's kind of hard for me to time this, but the idea is he will try to anti-air you you will do your dive kick like that and you will blow through the anti-air. This is basically the concept. It is a, an anti-air paint attack. And the good thing about this is that bare minimum, at bare minimum you are plus three. Like even if you do it at the worst possible height and it hits, you are plus three. So that means that you can get a jab, crouching light punch. And so you can do two crouching light punch into Tatsu, into uppercut. This is reliable. If you hit it from a further distance or if you hit it if you hit the dive kick as deep as possible, you can be even more plus. So you can get even better conversion. So if I manage to land it really deep, let's say, let's say something like this. This was so plus. But let's say something like this. The crouching medium, it was plus six. I was able to land the crouching medium. So depending on where it hits, you can get some really good conversions. Overall, it is a, really, a very good attack and it is one of your main strategies with Kagi. We said that Kagi ha kind of have short range and he have problems in the neutral. So jumping is going to be a big part of your game and you have to switch between regular jump, cross-up jump and the dive kick. They are all really, really good. The other really notable jumping normally he have is his jumping medium bunch and this is a really good air-to-air. -air. It puts them in a juggle state as you can see so you can like link a db or whatever after it if you want but it's also special cancelable so you can cancel it into air hadouken you can cancel it into air tatsu this will this can link if you you can even do the ex tatsu get a, a db on recovery let's see if i can get it to land right So you can get something like that. If you have the right combinations about V skill 2 and V trigger 1, you can get some insane conversions from this. You can do something like this, cancel into V trigger skill and get insane damage. 340 damage almost from an air to air, that is ridiculous. Like this is ridiculous damage, right? So his jumping medium bunch is really good. It's also a surprisingly good anti-air as well. So it's not only a good air-to-air, -air, it's also really good as an anti-air. So if your opponent is jumping in at you, 
let's say here we activate our meat river. You can even do it jumping back. If you notice that your opponent is jumping, your jumping medium kick is one of your go-to. As you can see, it is very, very strong. It's a very decent anti-air as well. So jumping medium punch is very notable. I will say you, if you, if it is your best air to air by far. If your opponent is jumping in at you and you notice that they are jumping, jumping medium punch is very good. As you can see, he hits completely horizontally, so it is very good. Now, then let's talk about his V skills, and I'm going to start with V skill 1. V skill 1 have a good resemblance to the focus attack from Street Fighter 4. So, what Kagi will do is he will do this charging attack, and you can do it, you can just tap it and he will release, or you can charge it all the way. When you charge it, it puts them on a juggle state. This have one hit of armor, so if your opponent is doing like an attack like that, You can armor through and hit them out of it. Then you can like activate V trigger, get whatever you want. If you do it, if, if you hold it, if you do the maximum hold version, maximum hold version and it hits. This actually also have a crush counter attached to it. I was just gonna, you know, about to get to that. But if you if you do the maximum version, it will put them in a juggle state. One of the changes that they did this season was make it so that Kagi can dash cancel out of it. So after I do it and it hit, I can press dash and I will be able to dash forward. This is because Kagi now can get this small juggle after this, so you can get like a light punch DB if you wanted here. If I just go time it right. Oh my god. Yeah, you get the light punch DB. You can get an EX DB if you wanted. So you can get a small juggle here. This is good in situations where you are outmatched in the neutral like for example when honda is doing his kick here i don't have anything that can hit him from this range as you can see like my range is super short compared to him so my strategy will be to absorb his attack and keep going because this does have decent range as you can see like it does have good range so it is good in footsies to throw this out but be careful because this is vulnerable to lose so if your opponent does like a sweep and you are doing your charging focus attack you will get hit out of it. It, it hitting you crouching will trigger a counter hit, so you can get crush counter sweeped a lot with this. Overall, I will say it's a good attack. It's 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 a really good attack to use, especially in situations like this. Like let's say Honda's doing full screen headbutt. Maybe you can punish this with your regular normals. So what you want to do is do the V skill, absorb and get the punish. You know, that is how you are supposed to deal with it. It is pretty decent overall, but it, it you know, it, it does have a weakness that it is susceptible to low attacks. Low attacks will give you an issue. If you hold the maximum version, it is it becomes minus 2 on block. Regular is minus 6, so this can get punished, absolutely. But if you hold it down, it becomes minus 2, so that's safe. One important thing that I have to say about this attack is that... If you can dash cancel it on block, you are minus four. So I would recommend only dash canceling when you are hit confirming it or if you saw it hit. As you saw, if this happened to land as a crush counter, because this does have a counter hit a property or crush counter properties attached to it, you can get a small juggle here, get like a heavy like like a medium tatsu into a let's get something small here. You can get like an uppercut here. So this is all right. If you happen to land fully charge it and land it, it triggers a big crush counter, and you can get like a dash up combo here. So at the mega hit, you will get a big damage out. Overall, it is a pretty useful V skill in my opinion. I would recommend using it a lot. But you know, let's talk now about V skill two. So V skill 2 does a short hobbing attack like this attack and this attack is also really really good. What this does is it's first of all you can use this as a throw bait. If you just press the V skill he will do this you know this lunge attack. If you hold forward while you're doing it you can kind of control the distance about how far or how short it goes. 
This is decent as its throw bait. It is minus two on block and it leaves you out of throw range. So if you block this, as you can see, there's a little bit of pushback. They can throw you after it. So it is being it being safe is really really good. If you happen to land it as a counter hit. So let's say we happen to land it as a counter hit, it is plus 3, so you can absolutely combo after it, you can do like a crouching light bunch. And this will combo after it, so this is really good. The main use of this V-Skill in my opinion is with V-Trigger 1, and with the target combo attached to it. So this is attached to the uh, forward heavy bunch, heavy kick, medium, or the V-Skill turtle. This is the target combo. And the reason that this is gonna be used a lot is because if you happen to land the sequence, you will build a lot of V-Bar. So let's say we got a crush counter here. That was almost half a bar. So... Another one and, you know, because Kagi have good V-Triggers in my opinion, it is good to have a decent way to build V-Bar. So if you don't have anything in particular that you want to, like, focus attack, I would recommend actually going with this V-Skill, it is pretty easy to use and the functionality of just having this target combo is really good. You do also 190 damage, you have some OK on Quick Rise as you can see because you're plus 2 so you can completely throw them after it. It is good in that sense and it is of course very easy to use, you can use it to throw pit your opponent, let's say you have Honda try to wake up with the throw. So Honda will try to throw us on wake up. You can do something like that, bait the throw and you know, go for a throw of your own. And of course you can always V trigger cancel this. So this is really good, let's it back our V bar to maximum, go to recover. So now if you do this, you can always of course V trigger cancel and you do have actually a lot of advantage here. So you can get something like this, you can even get like a crouching heavy at this point. So there is a lot that actually goes into this. It is a pretty good V-Trigger activation in my opinion. So, in my opinion, if you're playing a character who have like really long range or something in particular that you feel like you need to focus, go with V-Skill 1. If you're just like going with a generic game plan and want a V-Skill that can help you build V-Trigger, V-Skill 2 is really, really good. It is pretty reliable and it's very easy to use. But this is very easy to use V-Skill. It's really obvious what you want to do with it, and this target combo especially makes it very, very strong in my opinion. It's very decent V-Skill and very reliable. So now let's talk about Kage, and I'm going to start with the V-Triggers, obviously, and V-Trigger 1. Kage's V-Trigger 1 is a 2 bars V-Trigger, and in my opinion, it is pretty, it's a pretty good V-Trigger. It does a lot for Kage. It's not a top tier V-Trigger like say Colleen or Cody, it's, it's, it's not gonna make him like the best character ever, but it does give him a ton of utility. So what the V-Trigger does is give Kagi an enhanced V-Skill, his V-Skill 1 and V-Skill 2 are enhanced in different ways, and it also gives him the teleport, right? And in concept, these, these couple of functions help him in many practical ways. So the very first way is you can DP if ADC. For those who didn't play Street Fighter 4, what this means is you can do an uppercut. Typically if you do an EX uppercut, this get blocked, you are very vulnerable, you eat a crush counter punish and you die pretty much, right? But with V trigger 1, Kagi can do this and then cancel into the teleport to be safe. You will get two of these in this V trigger, so this is excellent. Like this is this is honestly amazing. You will be minus 14, so you can get punished technically, but minus 14 from a distance like that is hard for most characters to punish. So right off the gate, you get a safety net that you can uppercut and be safe. The second functional thing that this V trigger gives you is side switch combos. So let's say for example, um, let's say I'm in the corner. I can do. I, I will try to match my three frame, and my three frame will combo to the crouching medium, as we just said, right? This is a two-hit combo, so I can get something like this into the EX fireball. Typically, this is fine. You will do something like this, uppercut. You know, you know the typical stuff. But with this V trigger, I can side switch, so I can do something like this, side switch, and now they are in the corner, and Kagi is very strong in the corner. 
So this is excellent. It, you, you don't even have to go with that boss. You can go with other ones. So for example, Crouchy Jab. And you know, cancel this one into the V-Trigger. And then get a heavy armor gun. You know, there's actually a lot of paths that you can take that will, you know, give you some really cool side switch combos. The other part of this is that he also gets the teleport. The teleport have some uses in some frame traps. Like you can do, there is some... You can actually, I believe you can get this to like, uh, hit in a very tricky way, as you, as you saw, so you can get some setups with this, some knockdown setups with this. It's mostly gonna happen if you do the sweep crush counter for activation. So right off the gate, it gives you some mix-ups, it makes some of your stuff safe, it may, it gives you an EXTB that is practically safe. It also allow you to, it kind of a way in, because you can do heavy fireball. Let's have, let's have cocky, let's have bolts and lock here. You can do something like this, and then if he uh, do the teleport, and now you're plus four. So this is a get in tool. Now you also have a get in tool, a move that you can use to get closer to your opponent and be at plus frames. And I also side switched in this example. As you can see, so this is all very, very strong. Now, on top of all of that, it also gives him a really enhanced V skills, and his V skills are really, really, really strong, I would say. So, his V skill 1 will be this dash that goes full screen and is plus on block. So, it will be this attack. As you can see, if it hits, you get into a crumble state. If they are blocking this, this is plus. This is plus 6. Like this. Plus 6 means that the crouching heavy will frame trap 3 frame character. So this is excellent. This is still have one hit of armor. So if we here had Sim try to let's have let's have a specific sequence. Let's say Sim is gonna block something and then try to Oh that's not good. Okay see so Sim will get knocked down. He'll try to wake up with a medium and you get full big combos from this so not only does it have like you have an armored full screen almost this is this goes like about 80% of the screen like as you can see this have really long range you are plus on block you get one hit for armor or if you manage to land the hit you get gigantic damage out of this as you can see, you can get like 400, that's like, that's 415 damage. So the applications are pretty obvious. The second thing is you can also special or special cancel this out of all normals. So for example, we talked about how with the medium kick, you can just then cancel this into this bomb attack. And this is cancelable to sumo. So this is something that you can get easily, like, you know, buffer the media kick mid screen, hit confirm it, and then cancel it to super. Also works, for example, for my target combo. You can actually land this. Also juggle it into super. If you happen to hit this in the corner, you can get some really strong juggles here. So you can get something like this. If I'm not too delayed. And then get like an uppercut here. So the V skill one does have a lot of functionality here. It is very very strong in my opinion. The only downside to this is that it is weak to V reversals. This is the only thing that I would say is an issue here because your opponents can totally V reversal you if you go for this a lot. So we here have Dulcim try to V reversal this. They were absolutely able to V reversal it. I couldn't able to block. So don't. Don't waste your V-Triggers doing this as a get-in tool. If you want to get in, I would recommend using this more. This is better. I could even punish him here. So I see he goes the other way around. So, V-Skill v -skill 1 get enhanced a lot, but V-Skill 2 is a beast now. V-Skill 2 is a beast of a V-Skill, especially in V-Trigger 1. So in V-Trigger 1, V-Skill 2 becomes this massive you know, knuckle attack. It's it's kinda it kinda reminds me of Terry from you know like King of Fighters. 
So this is excellent in every way possible. This attack will go through fireballs, or it does have some like fire. It it, it, it it will jump over fireballs pretty much. You can use this as a shimmy. You can use this to cancel from an ex move. So for example, if you do like ex tatsu, cancel it into the v skill too, and then you get a heavy one juggle. The fact that you can always get a db a heavy db after it means that you can always cancel the super. So you can always juggle this. It also enhance it significantly enhances his combo damage. So for example, if I turn the counter hand off, if I'm talking about a typical jumping combo, I will be doing something like this. This is 360 damage, which is still really high. But with this V skill now, he is doing four that's like 420 off. Let's say 410. So you get like 70 more damage. This is excellent. You can also OTG with this attack if you happen to land a crush counter sweep. So you can do something like this. And then get a super. You can even get some cheeky resets here. You know, get some standing resets like that. You can use this for air-to-air -air situations like we elaborated earlier, so you can get something like this. And now your air-to-airs do a ton of damage. V-Skill 2 in V skill two in V-Trigger 1 mode or in the V-Trigger 1 state gives you a ton of burst damage. Like the burst damage potential goes off the chains with this V-Skill in my opinion. So this is a very strong combination. V-Skill 2 with V-Trigger 1 is a very strong combination because you get to have insane burst damage and you also get to have really good V trigger building because of this target combo. So overall, V skill what V trigger one is a very good V trigger. It does give you a ton of utility as you just saw. I would recommend actually using it a lot. So now I'm going to talk about Kage and his V-Trigger 2. Kage's V-Trigger 2 is a 3 bars V-Trigger and that instantly makes it a harder sell for me. That is because he is of course a low HP character, he only have 925. So a 3 bars V-Trigger means that you are going to be activating at a little bit of a more life deficit, probably. So let's talk about the V-Trigger first. What does it give you? It gives you first, it enables you, it unlocks its new special move. It is a Misogi. You do the V-Trigger button or the heavy punch and heavy kick and you get the Misogi. It also gives him the classic Raging Demon. Of course, the Raging Demon has the classic input. It is two light punches forwards and light kick and heavy punch or heavy kick. So it does give him the classic Raging Demon. The thing is, these two work together in tandem because the Misogi gives you a hard knockdown. So for example, if I do like a uppercut, typically they can quick rise as you can just see, but if I cancel into the Misogi, they have to stay down and get a hard knockdown. A hard knockdown means a setup. And the Raging Demon is a 400 damage command grab. If we here had her blocking, Let's have her block everything. If I do a Raging Demon, something like this, she will have to eat it. Like, once the, once the animation started, once the flash started, she will have to eat the demon. So this innocently makes it a very dangerous attack, because now you get a guaranteed hard knockdown setup. So you can do some really stupid things, like something like this. With this, this you are minus 3 on wake up, but they are so worried about the demon that they will stand and block and they eat the demon. This will of course enable you some really stupid shit, because if they are like trying to jump, now you get other setups and you are getting a ton of damage for this. So there are a ton of setups here. You, there are setups to make the overhead combable. There are a ton of setups. And not only that, this also gives you some really cool punishes. So for example, if we here have her block everything. I don't know why I'm failing this so hard.
Yeah, that demon was a punish pretty much. I failed it like 10 times for some reason. But that demon reversal timing that will punish if you reversal on block. So it does give you a lot of utility, it does give you some really cool punishes. One of the cool things about his Raging Demon is that it's also combable from anything. So you can do something like the Axe Kick. Typically you can, of course you can super cancel this into the, his traditional super. But you can also special cancel it into the Raging Demon and this gives you even more damage. If we talk something like this, let's see the damage output. You will be doing 366, but if you are cancelling into the demon, you are gonna get about 420, I think. Yeah, 420. So you are getting more damage for your super confirms. You are also getting pokes to demon, because his standing medium kick, you can link this into raging demon. So, I see this hit, I do my raging demon input, you don't even have to cancel it, this is just a link. You see this hit and then you cancel into a demon, so this is of course very very strong. The Misogi also gives you some really cool benefits, because it allows you to convert from stuff you typically will not be able to. So for example, you hit a maximum range crouching leg kick, combo to the Misogi. This is actually a thing, that you can fish with this and this is a good round ender. It also gives you a really high damage from EX uppercuts. If I do like an EX uppercut, a weak up uppercut, cancel into the Misogi, that is almost 300 damage. So, there is a lot here that is really, really good. My issue with this V trigger is that it is really strong when you have Super, when you have the Raging Demon. The Raging Demon makes this knockdown 50 times scarier. This is typically is like, okay, he gets a hard knockdown. Which is dangerous, but when you have the raging demon, now you are like now you have to guess between a 400 damage combo or a 400 damage command grab. It is very dangerous. But if Kagi doesn't have the bar, this is significantly weaker in my opinion. If you don't have the super bar, if, you, if your meter is not full, this becomes a lot weaker. And this is my biggest issue with this V trigger. To make the most out of his V trigger too, you will need the raging demon. So we are talking about saving up all of our super meter and all of our V meter to basically get a 50-50 comeback and it is a very strong V trigger, don't get me wrong, it's a very strong 50-50 and you can, like, it's, it is honestly cheap as hell because you can do stuff like this for example Let's have her not be reversal You can do something like this you know, I feel it like three times. <laughs> but you can do stuff like that. And this is extremely dangerous. This, of course, is extremely dangerous. You can get this. It's crazy good. It's crazy good. But we are talking about saving all of our super meter and all of our V trigger meter for a potential comeback. And that, my, that to me, is the biggest issue with this V trigger. You are holding yourself back to basically have a chance at a comeback later. So it is still a very strong V trigger, don't get me wrong. I like it a lot, but it's hard it's a harder sell to me than V trigger one. V trigger one I feel is better overall. One notable thing I want to say about this V trigger though is that you do get better V trigger activations here because you can special cancel you can cancel into it from a special move. So you can do something like Crouching medium kick Hadouken, dash up and you are getting a combo here. You are absolutely getting a full conversion. When you are using the V trigger 1, this will not work. V trigger 1 you have to use EX specials. So if I try to V, v, v trigger cancel, this is doing nothing. I have to use the EX bar. Which, you know, that is something, that's something to consider. But overall, in my opinion, V trigger 1 is a better V trigger. It does allow you a ton of utility. One cool thing that I have to mention, and it's actually pretty important. The Raging Demon doesn't give you a very good knockdown. So for example, if I do the Raging Demon here, I get no Oki after it. So if you do the Demon, you are too far away and you basically reset the neutral. While with the other super, you actually do get, you know, you do get a follow-up. So if we do it to fault here, 
I am plus and plus 14 and she's right in front of me so I can throw her again so while the demon does give you better damage it doesn't give you a better knockdown after it hits so that's all on his V-Triggers in my opinion V-Trigger 1 is a better and easier V-Trigger to use but you know it's up to you V-Trigger 2 is absolutely usable if you love hitting people with raging demons you can play with V-Trigger 2, it is still a decent enough V-Trigger. So now we are going to talk about Kage's special moves, and of course we will start with the classic, the Hadouken. <clears throat> Kage doesn't have a traditional Shoto Fireball, his Hadouken kinda resembles Dan's old Hadouken, it's just a burst of energy in front of him. This have its uses, it is good in some regards and it is kinda not so good in others. The thing about this is you can use it as a poke, so from a distance like this, the Hadouken is a decent poke. Of course it is also very very good for playing the crushing medium kick into Hadouken game. Because this is minus 3, so this is completely safe regardless of who you are fighting against. Almost no character will be able to punish you out of this. You can also use it in some block strings if you like the laser cancels. So this is a great move for that. It's good for this distance and to use it for you know crushing medium kick fireball. If you happen to see it land, you can cancel into super. It, it, it's it, it's a pretty and it's a pretty safe move to cancel into. Like it, it, it's very very good for that. Like the crouching medium kick fireball, that's all very very good. There is an important thing that you need to know though, and that is, if you happen to land this from max range, the super might whiff. So, so if I'm doing the crouching medium kick Hadouken and I'm trying to fish for super, so from some ranges this might actually whiff. I believe this is what will connect. I want to find the sweet spot. This might whiff. Yeah, that might happen. So you have to be a little bit careful of that. It is very, very good for fishing into super, but from maximum range, it is. From maximum range, crouching medium kick, I mean. This is suspect to whiff. So be careful with that. <clears throat> the other important normal that he have, of course, or the other special move, is the Fred Fireballs. The red fireballs are the, there are three versions of course, the light, medium and heavy. And the light, medium and heavy are all really really good for different reasons. The thing about Kagi's light punch shakanats is that it doesn't move his hurt box forward. So for example, this is a popular example, Guile doing his forward heavy punch. A traditional Hadouken will get crush countered from something like this. Because you will be moving your hurt box forward, so this will happen. But his Shekinatsu Fireball, because it doesn't move his hurt box forward, he will be able to basically... It's kind of like he doesn't move forward during it. So getting hit out of it is much less likely to happen than the other regular Fireballs, which is excellent. So this is really, really good. And that makes a Light Punch Shekinatsu. This is your main Fireball. So this is like your typical Hadouken. This is the main projectile that you're going to be using throughout the match, right? It have a one-hit durability, so it's not fantastic. The startup is kind of longer than the regular Hadouken. Not awful, but you know, it is longer than the regular Hadouken. But you gain the benefit of using it in the neutral. Because like we showed, you might throw this in the neutral. And if they are a little bit from the footsies range, they are, it's hard for them to hit you out of it, which is excellent. Of course, the medium and heavies have multiple hits. Medium hits two times, heavy hits three times. And the main purpose of this is for full screen, honestly, full screen engagements. Because if you do this, like the, 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 the fireball war with Guile or something like that, of course he will beat you. Of course he will beat you. So the idea behind the heavy shakanas and the medium is to just, you know, have multiple hit fireballs just to gain some ground. And of course, this is only really good in my opinion if you are full screen. If you are mid screen like here, the heavy fireball, the heavy red fireball is too slow. So this is this is very easy to jump. But from far screen and in fireball engagements, I would say this is pretty good. 
So let us now talk about the EX versions of these attacks. Uh, EX Hadouken is pretty good, it, it leads to a crumble state, so you can combo a heavy Kiktatsu into heavy uppercut afterwards. This is also Blossom Block, but it doesn't leave you in throw range. So if you do this, you can throw them after it. In the corner, you can, which makes it very strong in the corner. So in the corner, you can do this, and then throw them after. You know, go for some block strings. Or maybe like shimmy them here, or you know, just immediately go for the throw. So in the corner, the EX Fireball is pretty good. The thing about this is that it combos only from his mediums, the crouching medium point blank. Let's remove the counter hit. It combos from the crouching medium at point blank. The standing medium from decent range, but it's still it's you need to be close to get for, for to get it to work. Like, uh, it's kind of finicky, like sadly it's kind of finicky, and it will combo from the, uh, the standing heavy from all ranges. So, whenever you get this, the EX Hadouken will combo, so it is very good on hit. And with V-Trigger 1, you can actually get like a full dash up combo here. So, the EX Hadouken is good in block strings, and it is good to use, you know, f for maximum damage combo, from for really high damage combos, right? The other, of course, the other normal are the Tatsus. And the Tatsus, Kaki's Tatsu doesn't have any fireball invulnerability at all. So if your opponent is doing Sonic Booms or whatever, you can go through them with Tatsus. These are not made for that. These attacks are strictly combo attacks. You will be using his Tatsus for combos, and there is a general rule of the thumb here. Light will combo from lights. So if you do light attacks, you will only be able to combo into light tatsu. If you do medium attacks, you will be able to combo into medium tatsu. And if you do heavy attacks, you will be able to combo into heavy tatsu. Like crouching medium bunch into heavy tatsu, that doesn't work. Standing medium bunch into heavy tatsu, that doesn't work. So the strength of your normal is what tatsu you will be able to combo into. So from lights, you get light. From medium, you get medium. And from heavy, you get heavy tatsu. And also, speaking of that, you also combo a DB after each tatsu, and it is the same rule. If you do the light tatsu, you can only get a light DB. If you do a medium tatsu, you can only get a medium DB. And if you get a heavy tatsu, you get a heavy DB. So, light normals, combo to light tatsus, combos to light shoryus. It's very very straightforward and it's very easy to understand. You keep on the same strength level pretty much going forward. Once you are at the medium strength, so for a medium bunch, you can combo into EX Tatsu, which does give you this big launcher style attack. You can then dash up and do heavy DB. So these attacks, of course, they are all unsafe. They lead to some decent Oki on knockdowns, but again, like we said, they are strictly combo attacks. These are strictly combo attacks. You are you, you want to hit confirm into Tatsus, you can just throw them out there, right? Of course, now we will get to the Shoryus, and he have the light Shoryuken, medium Shoryuken, heavy Shoryuken. And all of these have the same traditional uh, invincibility, you know, situation in Street Fighter V. Light have, uh, you know, grab invulnerability. Medium is invulnerable after the third frame and is a good anti-air. And heavy is against projectiles. They are all really good anti-airs, I would say. So if if you have your opponent jumping, if we had here, if we had dial jump from this range, you will be able to get like a medium uppercut. Which is decent from further range somewhere like here you can get a heavy uppercut and this is even still a decent anti-air as you can see like his heavy his upper heavy uppercut have quite the range and like we said the all combo from the tatsus so from light tatsu you get light db medium tatsu you get medium db heavy tatsu you get heavy db and light db doesn't give you okay medium db give you Oki on quick rise but not on bad rise and they give you like they give you progressively better Oki the light gives you the least amount of Oki medium give you slightly better Oki heavy you get the best Oki right so they are these are all like you know they are combo attacks and they are all really really good for what they do they especially especially the heavy one the heavy is what you will want to be doing the most because it leaves you the closest to them of course that leaves us with the EXDP, which is very, very strong.
the thing about Kagi's EXDB is that it moves him forward so much. So much so that you'll be able to um, you'll be able to go through fireballs with this thing. So as you can see, like that was a fireball punish. So because this goes so far, you can actually punish fireballs with this from quite a bit of range. And of course, it is a wake up attack. You can you know it is an EXDB. So EXDB is really really good. The thing that I have to tell you about though is that. You can juggle the EXDB after any Tatsu. So if you do like light Tatsu, you can get an EXDB here. If you do, of course, the medium and the heavy, it is the same thing. So a combo like that, that should work. We got the light DB. And you get an EX. The thing also that you have to consider when you are cancelling into Super. If you cancel into Super from the light DB, the super will not trigger the cinematic version and you will not get the most damage. So if I do light Tatsu into light DB and try to combo super after the DB, so I do something like that, this will not trigger the full cinematic animation, you will not get the most damage. From the medium onwards, you will get the cinematic and you will get the maximum damage. So this makes it much more preferable to go for the medium version. If you ever get like a medium to medium, this is of course the best and of course the heavy will also you know this will trigger the cinematic version of the super which does more damage and give you better okay now his final two attacks are the air fireball and the storm and these are all really really good for different reasons air fireball is good to throw out you can do an instant air version like that and this is useful in combos for example if you're in the corner you can like juggle into regular Hadouken, but you can also do like an air, an instant air EX, instant air Hadouken in general. I don't know why I'm stuttering, but yeah, like you can get this if they are. Uh, it's also really useful to use for painting anti airs because you are jumping forward, you do the Hadouken, and you stop in place. It is decent for zoning, but it doesn't hit grounded. So if you do it like that, no matter how low you do it to the ground. It doesn't hit grounded opponents. Even, you know, you might be fighting Abigail and he's standing right in front of you, but this will not hit him. So, it is good for some combos. It is good for, to throw it out if you expect to jump. And it is good to use it to bait anti airs. These are the main uses of his air Hadouken, right? Now, the EX air Hadouken does give you a juggle state. So, for example, if we had Guile here, and we had him jumping in the corner. You can get an EX Hadouken and then you can get like a... You know, you can get a follow up here. So you get this, you then you do an EX DB or DB in general. So that is the main point of it. The final attack you have are the Storms. And the Storms are pretty interesting. First of all, they don't combo from lights whatsoever. So you can't do any lights into Storms. They only combo from medium or upwards, right? So from medium, you get from like a crushing medium bunch, you can get a light Storm or a medium Storm. And from a crushing medium kick, you can only get a light Storm, right? So these all serve different purposes. The light one, is the fastest so you can fish for something like this crouching medium kick into light storm and this is really good because remember when we said that the hadouken to subar might whiff the storm into subar this never whiffs so if you're fishing for subar this is a riskier option admittedly because it is minus four on block so if your opponent is just blocking everything the light storm is minus four so you can get punished here but like we said, this into Subar, this will connect from all ranges. So you can fish with the Hadouken if you want, but there is some risk to this. This is more punishable on block, but you are guaranteed to land the Subar if it hits. And it does more damage, of course. This is 1-4. This is 1-4. It's the same damage. Okay, so excuse me for that. This is, you're getting the same damage. His other storms are the medium, and the medium ones are safe. This, if, if, if your opponent blocks the medium one, this is minus two, so you're completely safe. And the heavy are plus three. Plus three is really, really good. So the heavy one leaves you at plus frame, so then you can walk up and throw them after. 
you are not in throw range after it even if you do it point blank you're not in throw range so you will have to micro walk to throw them but you are plus three they will likely respect your frame data here you can do something like crouching heavy into the heavy stomp and then throw them after the issue with this is that it is interruptible so if your opponent is trying to say mesh three frame they can absolutely always interrupt you out of this so if you do something like this into the, like the heavy storm you go going through the plus frames they can interrupt you every single time it is interruptible and it is reactable so it is not something that you should go for a lot it is something that once you have conditioned them to be blocked once you are sure that they are overwhelmed by your offense then you start to throw in the heavy tatsus in my, or the heavy storms in my opinion this is the time for it but not early early on i would say it is not that great because you know this is pretty easy to interrupt any player who is really good they are gonna interrupt this easily in my opinion it's even easier to interrupt than Sith's uh, Tatsu but if you go for the medium version there is actually a frame trap here and you will be at plus frames so there is an inherent mix up here if you go to something like crushing media bunch into the Tatsu you are plus four so then you can combo this get a counter hit conversion so there is a little bit of an inherent mix up between the medium tatsu and the heavy tatsu but you know make sure don't know that it is interruptible it also gives you the tatsus in general are or the storms are good for multiple reasons F first they give you a restand which is really good if you do something like this you're plus two and you are in throw range so if you do the medium tatsu you can completely throw them after on, in, on, even on hit so on hit you're still in throw range at plus two if they try to mesh anything at this point they are getting thrown there is nothing they can do so if uh, if i'm if i want to do a combo i can do something like this then throw them after it's, it's it enables pretty cool resets it sets up a scramble reset situation they're gonna be scared because you're still blast so maybe they'll jump then you hit them again or they will be passive and block and you can get a throw it's annoying it is something that is annoying to deal with pretty much which makes it really really good and of course like we said they're also really good for damage and they are really good to cancel it super and because the heavy storm is plus on block it also is very good on hit after a heavy storm on hit you are plus five so you can get a crouching medium so it allows you to do combos like this just getting the crouching medium is really really good you can do this then maybe throw after or whatever the ex version of the storms is an overhead this is an overhead if your opponent is crouching as you see your guy had to stand up to block this this is an overhead so you can like do some quick like some cute things like, let's have him not trying to interrupt here of course this is unsafe it is minus seven or minus eight so it is punishable but you can it's a decent round ender and if you happen to have v trigger one you can do this and you know step away and be safe you can try to go for stuff like that it's not it's not a bad idea to go for that stuff so these are his moves in general of course he also have the air tatsus and air tatsu is really good for specific situation it's really good for a it's really good for some juggles like you can get something like uh, i'm sorry You can get it to combo in situations like this but honestly these are not i don't think these are good or reliable pretty much to be honest i, I am failing at it miserably <laughs> you guys go show you that i didn't even practice this maybe you need to have crush counter to do this yeah so it is decent for some stuff like that but i don't recommend it you can also do the instant air tatsu thing the issue with this is that if they are crouching you know you first of all you can't combo from this on non counter hit so you are only plus two you don't get a combo here i know some people like this stuff but i don't really recommend using it a lot and the thing about this is that it also waves on crouching opponent so they are of so if they are crouching yeah, that waves over the head so not the best thing to go for constantly in my opinion i don't i don't like it i just this is for me is a gimmick i don't really like it that much it can save you in some scenarios 
but I don't really recommend using it a lot and especially on when you're trying to learn the character I don't think they are necessary at all I don't even use them at all you will not see any high level player like Sako or Daigo or anyone like that using them you can gimmick some of your opponents out with them but like we said just them whiffing on crouching opponents like most of the time people are gonna be crouching anyways so hitting that instant cross up it's not gonna happen a lot So before I leave you with combos and Oki, I want to discuss two things briefly about Kage and that are his super, of course we talked in depth about the Raging Demon, so I'm now talking about the Metsu Shoryuken, I believe that's what's called in this game. Uh, his super is done by doing two fireball inputs, you know, two fireball, two fireball forward motion and punches. This is pretty good for a variety of reasons in my opinion, so first of all it's very easily combable. Comboing into uppercuts, it combos from uppercuts, it combos from tatsus, it combos from the storms. So it, you, you can easily combo into this. And one of the best thing about this is that when you do it in the corner, you are very close to them afterwards. So let's say you are, you are doing like a jumping combo in the corner, you got a big combo going, did something like this, you landed your big damage, you are like dude 4, 482 and they are still still right next to you so like it does a lot of supers in Street Fighter 5 will reset the neutral or puts a situation that's not very favorable but Kagi super will maintain your corner position which is very very strong it leaves you right next to them at plus 14 so you can immediately go into throw or shimmy mix up this is excellent and uh, it's overall a very decent super I think I think for Kage it is a pretty decent super and because you want to keep them in the corner, right? The thing about Kage, his pressure is so strong, you want to have them in the corner and keeping them there. And if you decide to cash out and go for the super, you still maintain your objective, which is excellent. The final thing I want to discuss is his V-reversal. And Kage actually have a pretty good V-reversal, in my opinion. His V-reversal is a 12 frame V-reversal. It leaves him at plus two on hit, so you can go for kind of a, a, a little bit of a micro work. They are, you are not in throw distance, so you can throw them afterwards, but they are close enough for you to either play like a shake game, or you know, just immediately go for a grab. So it is a pretty good V reversal. I think it's a pretty good V reversal. It gives him pretty good strong defensive options, because he does have the 3 frame, he has the DB, he has the EXDB into safety and V trigger, so it does round up his defensive options fairly well. And this is everything we had to cover today on Kage, I will be leaving you with the combos and Oki next. Overall Kage is a fantastic character, he's not the strongest character, but he's honestly one of the most fun characters to play in Street Fighter V. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like or, subs or subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment please, it all really helps the channel so much. Thank you for watching and stay safe.